When Rahul Gandhi, 47, was appointed Vice President of India's Congress Party four years ago, under his mother, Sonia Gandhi, he told reporters that power is poison. For a politician, it was a strange remark. From today, Gandhi will be taking big drafts of that poison when he takes over from his mother as president of the party that was once an unbeatable election juggernaut in India. It will be the start of one of the biggest political challenges in recent history for one of India's most perplexing politicians. Gandhi was a who reluctantly entered politics 13 years ago on his mother's wishes. He has taken many years to get to grips with his role. At crucial moments, when his leadership was needed, he was out of the country on some jaunt. Over the years, he has battled widespread mockery over his bumbling amateurishness and lack of political nous, earning him the derogatory moniker Pupu, a nickname for a small boy. On occasions when he has tried to be aggressive, it has brought to mind British politician Danny Healy's famous remark that being attacked by his rival, Geoffrey Howe, was like being savaged by a dead sheep. Get the latest news and updates emailed straight to your inbox. By submitting your email you are agreeing to Fairfax Media's terms and conditions and privacy policy. On Monday, however, Gandhi takes over the reins as the latest member of the Nehru Gandhi dynasty to lead the 132-year-old Congress party, which has been in opposition since 2014 when Aridra Modi and his Bharatiya Janata Party, BJP, came to power. Gandhi's selection, uncontested, as president is a formality because he has been the de facto leader for the past four years as his mother gradually withdrew, letting him take charge. His anointment has been praised by veteran Congress leader Gulam Nazi Azad who said, Rahul Gandhi will be successful and his leadership will bring the Congress back to power. But whether Gandhi has it in him to lead the Congress party to victory in an election is an open question. Almost everything is stacked against him. The party organization is feeble. In her 19 years as president, Mrs. Gandhi let it become moribund in virtually every state. Rahul Gandhi has spoken of the urgent need to rebuild it but has done little. The party simply does not have grassroots workers and leaders who can canvass support, campaign for candidates, and get the votes in. Gandhi's other disadvantage is that the notion of dynasty no longer holds sway over the Indian public as it once did. His father, Rajiv Gandhi, his grandmother, Indira Gandhi, and his great-grandfather, Jawaharlal Nehru were all prime ministers. The glamour and charisma attached to the name made the Gandhi's India's answer to the Kennedys. But young Indians tend to be less deferential now and more inclined to have a modern outlook. Dynastic inheritance of a political party sits uncomfortably with this outlook.